Today we're going to try to install Kali Linux into VirtualBox. You need to go to the Kali Linux webpage, which is kali.org. Go to Downloads. And you want the 64-bit installer. Stay away from Torrent. Stay away from all the other stuff. Just do the 60-bit, 4-bit installer and download that. And then you're going to bring up VirtualBox. And there's a previous video you can look at to figure out how to install VirtualBox. And we're going to create a new virtual machine. So we're going to go new. And since I've already got Kali Linux installed with the GNOME version and the XFC version, I have to give it a different name. You can't have two virtual machines with the same name. So we'll just call this Kali 2020. And Linux. And you see it changed to a Linux icon before Kali Linux. This is the wrong icon. So we need to go to the version because Kali Linux is based on Debian. And we're going to go to Debian 64 bit. Now, if you don't see a 64-bit option, it's probably because you have an older machine or virtualization is turned off on your machine, which you would turn on in your BIOS, and that depends on the manufacturer. Or if you're running something like uh, Hyper-V or VMware, it might interfere and you might not see a 64-bit version. VirtualBox does not, at the current version, support 32-bit virtual machines for this anymore so you'd have to get an older version of virtual box if you had an older machine with no virtualization okay so we got the debian icon the little red curly q here and 64 bit we're going to click next now the amount of ram you give it will depend on the amount of ram that your host or physical machine actually has you cannot give it the same amount you'll just won't work. You can give it half of what you have total. And if you have things to do that are more intensive, you either have to turn your virtual machine off or give the virtual machine less RAM. So for example, if you had eight gigs of RAM, you could do 4096, which would be half of your eight gigs. Um, the Windows side of it would slow down a little bit, but Kali would be fine. Um, if you find that the performance you need is not as intensive, you could maybe drop it to two gigs of RAM and do 2048. I have 16 gigs of RAM, so I'm going to give it four gigs. I'm going to click next and we'll take the defaults for the virtual VDI up until we get to where it says the size. If you don't change this, you're going to run out of space during the install, and the install is going to fail. It's dynamic, so even though I'm going to tell it to say 150 gigs, it's only going to use what it needs. But at least this way, when you're doing updates and, and saving files and stuff, you won't run out of space. I'm going to create the virtual hard drive, and here's my new machine, but we don't want to start it yet. We want to change some settings in here. So you go to the system tab and you see there's the RAM I gave it. Now, depending on your machine, you could give the virtual machine some virtual processors. By default, it only gives it one. And you see what I have in green here it means I could go a little higher. So I'm going to give this four just to help the install move faster. Don't try to do more than you can. You don't want to go into the red, and two is probably enough. Okay, the display, I'm going to enable 3D acceleration. And then the important part here on the network is for the course that we're doing in Udemy, uh, you want to be on the same subnet as your regular network. So for this, you want to pick a bridged adapter. You want to pick 
the adapter that you're getting an IP address from your router to your Windows machine or whatever your host system is. I happen to have a wireless network card. If I had an Ethernet cable plugged in, I could do that too. Uh, but this is where I'm getting the IP address for my Windows machine. And you'll notice that promiscuous mode is set to deny. That's not going to work. So you got to drop down, allow all. And you want to make sure cable connected is checked. You want to go to your USB and set that to 3.0. This will be grayed out if you didn't install the VirtualBox extension pack. And I'm going to click OK. If you want to check if the extension pack's installed, you go to File, Preferences, Extensions, and there's the extension pack. And this version will match the version of VirtualBox, but you need both installed. OK, I'm going to start the virtual machine. And it wants me to point to the ISO that I downloaded earlier. So I'm going to go look for the Kali Linux ISO. I'm heading for downloads. There's the fresh version. Also, when you download it, you want to make sure the file size is correct. This is a little over a 3.6 gig file. So if you, when you download it, if your file size is smaller, something went wrong, either you have an antivirus suite like uh, Norton, Cali, no, no, Norton, Avast, AVG, and McAfee. Unless you know your way around in those, um, it may mess up your download. It may keep the virtual machine from connecting. So unless you know the, how to do the advanced settings, you could have a problem. Um, I'm going to click open. I'm going to choose it. And now this is filled in with where my ISO is. And I'm going to say start. And depending on your display, this may be pretty small. So let me make this a little easier to see. I'm going to change the view a little bit because I have a 4K display, so this is going to be super tiny. And I'm going to go to 250% so we can read it. And later, when we get the guest editions installed, we should be able to go to full screen. Don't use the graphical install. Just drop down one and pick install right here. And it's going to take off. It's going to boot. And you're going to pick your language and your keyboard. Make sure you, if you have a UK P keyboard, make sure you pick a UK keyboard. If you have a US keyboard, make sure that you pick that or you're going to have problems later. So English, United States, American English, and it's going to start doing its thing. It will ask a few questions along the way. It's also going to go out to the internet and try to update some files. So that's why you want to make sure you bridged an adapter that is connected to your network already. So the adapter on your Windows host or whatever host you're using. It's always exciting watching bars go by. Now it detected my network. Now it wants me to give it a host name. You could call this ain't, it doesn't matter. Call it whatever you want. Um, we are here. Now to move around, you want to use your tab key. So I 
hit the tab key once it goes to continue, I hit enter. Don't need a domain name, just go tab over to continue. You don't need to put your full name in. Nobody's gonna know. And so I'm just gonna put Warren, tab over, and then it's gonna use that same one. I'm gonna use the same thing for my username. In this case, the new version of Kali does not use root. So I'm gonna use my name, hit continue. Now I gotta put a password in, tab over. Continue. It's going to ask me to do it again to prove I wasn't drinking when I typed it the first time. Continue. Okay, then your time zone. I'm in Eastern Standard Time. It's going to start retrieving some files. Now, if you're doing this in a virtual machine, you don't need to really set up the other things here you can just do the entire disk and there's only one disk because it's a virtual hard disk if you're trying to dual boot be careful i wouldn't recommend it unless you've got a full image backup of your system um, and again all files in one partition and it says recommended for new users i'm going to finish partitioning changes to disk now i got a it's going to show me the changes that I want to make. I'm going to tab over to commit and say yes. And it's going to create the file system. And it's just installing the base files right now. Now, depending on how much RAM you had and how many processors you gave it, uh, this could be time consuming. Uh, also, your download from Kali.org could be extremely time consuming if you have a bad internet connection. Even with my internet connection speed, it took about 35, 40 minutes to download. Watching bars goes by is always fun. <clears throat> Also, when you get this installed, just because it's the latest download from their website does not mean that it's up to date. So once we get it installed, we're going to have to update this. So I might have to do this in two or three videos, depending on how much time this actually takes. Okay, now it's asking if we have a proxy server and if you're at home, you don't, probably not going through a proxy server. So tab over to continue. It's gonna start retrieving files. Again, depending on the speed of your computer and how much RAM the virtual machine has and your internet connection, this could be slow or fast. Now we're gonna select the install software. Now this is the part that takes a while and once I start it, I might pause the video. Come on, you can do it. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. It's installing some libraries.
This is exciting as watching any operating system install. But as long as it's moving like this, you're good. Also, some of the features you want to look for if something's moving really slow, you don't, something doesn't look like it's working or it's standing still, don't close the window and kill it. You'll corrupt it. What you want to do is if you look down here, that's your virtual hard drive icon. It's blinking. There's your virtual adapter or network icon. If they're going back and forth and blinking, that means information's going back and forth. So even if you don't see movement up here, it doesn't mean it died. You know, so be patient. This is not going to be quick. Okay, so now this is the software part I was talking about. Now, by default, you have the desktop environment. And then below it, you have an asterisk next to XFCE, which is the new default for the environment. The old one used to be the GNOME environment. Um, but we're going to stick with the defaults. And these are the tools it's going to top, top 10 tools, default recommended tools, and then what I do is where it says large default selection plus additional tools, this will take longer, a lot longer, but it's tools I won't have to install later. So if you got the room and you got the speed, you arrow down, hit the space bar till you see an asterisk, tab over, hit continue. So now it's going to retrieve all that from the internet and it's going to start installing it. This could take a while. So you might want to get a pot of coffee going, get something to eat. Um, again, really exciting stuff to watch. The speed at which that bar is going by is boggling my mind. All right, so this is going to take a while. I'm going to stop the recording here and pick it back up when it starts asking me questions again.